So today, on The Art of Feeling Better, I have my lovely friend Tanya joining oh. me. Just going to grab a high five before we even start. Um, so I really wanted to have this conversation with you because I we've known each other for a couple of years now. Yep. And you are probably one of the only people that I have come across that I believe actually feels the same way as me about music being medicine, actual medicine. Yeah. Like real, real healing potential of music. Mm-hmm. And you're kind of... I feel like on a similar path to me that even though it's tough going at the moment, isn't it? Tough going with yeah. the way society's been and the, what we've been through the last few years. And you want to see I see, same as me. We have NAFL funding and we yes. have lots of need out there, lots of people who really need it. So the going is pretty tough and we've got that similar journey. But I feel like me, you know what you're doing and you know that that's your purpose. And yeah. you're kind of lined up and you're like, we've got, to, we've got to get this out there. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't matter how tough it gets. We kind of keep on rolling, keep on rolling. <laughs> I wonder how many musical references we can get into the next oh, half yeah. an hour. Definitely. That's the chat. How many, I'm up. How I'm up many possible musical? And do you like my Ace of Spades? Cushion. Oh, yes. <laughs> we've got, and my Kiss Mug. We've got the Kiss Mug and I've got a bit of Alice Cooper as well. Yes. So we're going full on music. My, my chemical romance on today. And I'm repping Cam Cole. Have you, mm. have you come across Cam Cole yet? I don't think oh, I Oh, I'm going to send you the links. Okay. Shameless plug because I'm going to send this to Cam. One man band, like you've never oh. talking about music medicine. Mm. If you watch Cam play, especially live, you can get him on YouTube. It's it's like medicine. The yeah. just just incredible. Yeah. Such a talented guy, and he's just yeah, it's okay. wicked. So this was my merch that I got last time I went to see him. So nice. I'm gonna send you some links later because you'll be you'll be impressed for sure. Um. So I thought we could have a chat today about about your journey. So um, okay. when I finally shut up in a minute I just want you to sort of talk me through your journey into music what what first got you into doing what you do I'm not going to spoil the kind of musician you are because you can talk about that what made you learn your particular instrument and how did you come to be running a CIC and doing all the amazing things you're doing Hmm. and then sort of the last sort of question will be around what you're what you're up to now and what's happening with your business so okay fill us in what why music what what's what's the big thing for you with music well originally i was quite the tomboy um and i used to want to play football rather than netball i was a teenage footballer i was probably the only girl that played in the youth club team at the time cool. that sort of thing So when they asked us what musical instrument I'd like to learn at school, I chose the most boyish one I could think of and went for the drums. Um, It also did help because it got me out of maths. The lessons got me out of maths and I thought that was winning. So that's what I went with um, at the time. But I learned as a teenager in school and then had a huge massive break from it. Did you? Yeah. Um, throughout my early 20s, uh, late teens, early 20s, uh, after I'd left school. And then after a relationship breakup, I came out with sort of not really an identity of my own. So I started to revisit things that I loved to do cool. by myself, realised drumming was one of them and I wanted to take it further and just went from there. So I just kept learning, kept going for lessons. I went to, for lessons with people I admired from Birmingham, London. I went to Drum Tech you, College you for you travelled for it then? Yeah, went to Drum Tech College for a bit and then um, I did a bespoke course there because I could only afford to take a X amount of months off work. Um, and then, yeah, just basically was in a band, went up and down the country with them. <laughs> like, it's, it's so cliche. You stick 500 quid's worth of gear into a 50 quid car for absolutely bugger all money and you go and play to a room of other bands. But it's true though, isn't it? You see it in all the films, don't you, how it works? Yeah. You, hear, you see it in all like the, the origin stories of all the big bands that have made it and you think, well, that can't be true. But it, it, this it life, definitely it's, it's is. literally, yeah. And it teaches you so much as well. It does teach you so, so much. So yeah, we chased the dream for a while and then um, had another mini break when I had my children because I had um, a disability in my pregnancies. That meant I couldn't really walk or play the drums. Wow. And then um, after they after they were born, um, I pursued it as a career. Wow. Um, so That's w- quite a thing to do with, as, yeah. as a mum with small children, to go, I'm going to be a drummer, that's it. Yeah, well, I mean, I was office work for years and years and years, but sadly, I had to give that up. Not sadly. Did you enjoy it? I was going to say, did you enjoy it? We were just having this conversation before about how, like, 
the normal people yeah <laughs> like, with the they, normal jobs with the standard and and the, the, you know some some people just cannot deal with that kind of lifestyle i'm one of them and i come across a lot of people and i always assumed that everyone was the same but they're not there's a lot of people that love the structure was, and the stability yeah i was happy at the time um with my especially when i worked in a fitness center but um the thing is we rearranged our lives around our child who's got special needs yeah. so we've got two beautiful children the youngest is autistic and we soon found that working normal jobs normal hours normal jobs we yeah. kicked our bums and yeah. we couldn't do it um not around him so i became his carer and then built up my business um because it was something i could do and it was something that we could do where my husband could cover me in yeah. the hours that we worked yeah we did similar yeah um yeah. and so then it went from from there really so you just built it up so andy and i had worked together in a um a little rock school that somebody else had run love captain andy oh captain andy He's a dude um yeah and we'd worked together for another rock school and i'd kept his details and for years and years didn't see him or speak to him but we were friends on facebook yeah, yeah. and then eventually i was like you know what i need someone reliable who can teach an instrument i can't teach mm. and we can make our own rock school and we went from there and so since 2017 we've been the rock works i love it um i i'm the drum tutor um and andy's guitar and bass and we've now got michael we went official over lockdown we did all the official paperwork to get up to be um community interest or um, which is a laugh a minute isn't it? Trying oh to, yes. trying to run a, yeah trying to run a social business is, is oh it's fun, just joy of joys isn't it isn't it and trying to get funding yes. and trying to establish our position and what we wanted to offer and um i was lucky enough to be a tutor for the clambert drumming project yes i remember you telling me about this so we can you give, give us some more detail about this because yeah. one of the things i wanted to talk to you about was around again music medicine but but in a, on a deeper level yeah so if you can give me give us oh, oh me you're earring earring. Again. i'm gonna <laughs> get that because i don't want one earring in Although they don't want to be in my ears today. They so don't. Maybe I should just trying to escape. Them, I should just take them out and be done with it. So yeah, if you give as much information as you want to. Okay. We've got all the time in the world, but I think it's just so important that people understand because we, it's still very much, I mean, everything that we do, it's very difficult to be taken seriously anyway. Yeah. Because I mean, it's just a hobby, isn't In it? a man's world as well. Especially man's world. Women, and it's really tough, really, really tough. And the credibility and the, the whole... I mean, everything I teach now is around getting out of the notion that anything creative is childish. Yeah. It's just a hobby. Yeah. It's not serious because mm -hmm. we understand through neuroscience now, through the deeper levels, that actually it's essential for human survival. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're kind of bringing to the table that deeper knowledge. You know, even though you're doing this amazing creative stuff and forward facing, it's just like, it's just incredible. There's so much depth underneath it there that is. people need to know about. So fill us in. So uh, the Clem bit drumming project was um i think it was i can't remember what year actually but it's by uh Clembert, the drummer for blondie um professor draper from hartlepool and professor marcus smith from uh, university of chichester so they were together um and they decided that they were going to scientifically study the impact of drumming in in physicality um, so they used, um, uh, you know, heart monitors mm. on, on Clem and some other drummers. And over time, they realised what um, it's not just what what is it? Clem bit says it's not just a pint and play some nip on stage and play some drums. It's there's actually quite a lot physically that goes yeah, into it. Heart brain coherence, massive for, for for health and well being. People don't realise they started this study and they were just studying that impact. But as the years have gone on, they've continued to study into more specific areas wow. and so i was approached to be their uh, tutor for them for the one that they were doing into autism yeah so at the time i'd been teaching a good few years i had a son who was just diagnosed with autism and obviously i wanted to as any parent does get involved with that yeah absolutely get involved with that so um i tutored a, a teenager as part of the study and what they did was fascinating the mri scanned these teenagers brains before and after intense drum lessons and they could literally see the changes mm -hmm. in the brain Incredible, they could see the new connections new pathways that had been 
developed as part of that and they did it all as university studies with controls and it's been since it peer peer published Brilliant. and marcus smith said um it's, it's what they like to call pill results that if they could put the results of the of the study in a pill they'd all be millionaires they'd and all be millionaires isn't that the sad bit that actually and I'm not going to, I'm definitely not going to get political in any way or <laughs> I'm going to be very careful with my wording here. But isn't it interesting that it actually is, it's there, it's available, freely available to anyone at any time. So that pill result yeah, is, is available there, and it always has been since the beginning of time. If you go back to tribes that you have drumming circles yeah. used, like the didgeridoo, the Women oldest. Women were the first the old, drummers. They were, the, the, the oldest instrument, you know, your voice and being able to bang on something. Yeah it's there yeah it's incredibly powerful it's how we heal it's how we survive and thrive and evolve as a species it's one yeah. of the tools that we use so it is there it's just not in the little white pill format that, that people would make the money yeah and that people feel and that people find credible yeah and that's what all my work is around so what you're talking about is neuroplasticity in action yes so trying as a woman who looks like this and is from the creative industries to start to get some credibility talking about brain science is a challenge and yes. i'm really working hard yes. to try and break through that boundary yeah. but working with amazing people like yourself and all, the, all my friends that i've had on this podcast starting to pull in the threads of just how this works how many mm. tools we actually have and yeah. how many incredible people specialize in the science of trees. I was talking to Vanessa last week about how trees and nature and the science behind how that impacts on our health. Yes. Talking to you about drumming and about these amazing things that we can access anytime we want to. I've got this week's, well, I, I say this week, I don't know when this episode's going out, but as it stands when we're filming today, on Thursday, I'm going to link you in. I've got Rex Young. So my friend is a physician in the States. So I've got oh, a wow. medic who has, been, who has been in medicine for many, many years talking about the impact of this kind of stuff and how yeah. we need to move more into this space. Well, that's it. It's, you know, it's, it's just, it, and, and these studies are incredible that they're coming out, that there's science there, but it's still difficult. Well, it's not just for autism. For everyone. So there's, well, there's evidence that it's for stroke, victims wow. yeah, um, for dementia for even I think even um, Parkinson's I was going to say is it, is it going to be useful for Parkinson's yeah and, and anything with sort of motor yeah related and yeah um, and also they they reckon towards women's health as well wow. so that's why I started the women's drum circle amazing and like menopause and things like that yeah I do a specific topic on menopause because I'm a woman approaching a certain age <laughs> and I'm always having like power surges as I call them but yeah I can imagine the power and I definitely I'm, I'm I know I haven't been yet but it's on my radar because I just I know it's going to help me massively but just having that women's space women's circles and being able to do something physical practical things that we'd never before been allowed to do or yeah. been acceptable to do being able to freely express yourself there's power in that even before Very you much. get to the, the my my ladies drum circle oh my god they're so cool they all came in and they've made a little group they call themselves a the diva beats and they've just oh, done their first performance at my show um at the rockwitz show two weeks ago and they went up on stage and did it for their friends and family <sighs> the room was packed and they all love it and there's see there's something between drumming the, that presents a unique challenge to the body and then the brain where you've got opposite limbs doing opposite things that means that those neural pathways that are like um, stunted due to brain fog and yeah. things like that can be rebuilt and can be so that's sort of the area see yeah. as you're talking it's making me wonder one of the things that I read one of the modalities that I really have an interest in and I always I mean it's not something that I practice but it's something that I'm always telling people one of my one of my kids has had experience with it firsthand my youngest and it was just life-changing for him is emdr so bilateral stimulation so yeah. emdr and I, and I can understand the concept from my studies in how it works but stimulating both sides of the brain yeah but there's certain things that you can do that aren't around sort of following the finger there's certain things that you can do around opposite sides yeah as a therapeutic while you are processing some emotions so mm -hmm. i wonder whether there's scope there for for I know there's already drumming therapy, but for that kind of in, in, including EMDR with drumming practice, so that well, you've yeah. got some practical, it's the same thing, isn't it's it? It's probably it's, the it's same thing. Rewiring your brain, yeah, by using that by lighting up both sides of the brain. That's right, and so getting clever. them to work together in ways that they don't normally do. With drumming, you get an immediate feedback because yeah. you make a noise immediately yeah. with whatever you're hitting. Mm. I can absolutely vouch to say that it's a very good stress relief. 
I bet. I, I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, I've not had a chance yet. As I say, Gracie's learning at the moment, so she's like, um, and I just think I'd be like Animal from the Muppets. <laughs> just, uh, well, they call yeah. me Tanimal. Tanimal, really? I love it. I love it. But I can imagine the actual physical aspect of drumming must be, it must be tiring though. Do you oh, yeah. I, I do about 20,000 steps a gig and I am absolutely yeah. soaking. Like, there's no glamour in it whatsoever. No, no, you no. go, Drummers are you so sit cool, in the back. Though. And you, you have your own little party, no one can see you, and yeah. then you come off and you <laughs> and, and you, like you feel so tired, and then you just got to lug all the gear back out again. There's no, there's and you've no. You've got all uh, that glamour. kit to put. It's not like just you put your guitar in the van. Oh, I know. You just take your voice with you. My you've dad's got favourite a... saying, "Kid, couldn't you have learnt the guitar yeah. every time? Every time, just unplug and off you go." Why do you think I drive a van? Yeah, just go, yeah you have to, don't you? That's yeah. the thing. It's all kit, isn't it? My it's gosh. too much. I yeah, love it. I just, yeah, I just, I just love the fact that we're starting to have these conversations though now, and we're starting to raise awareness. So for me, I'm trying to make sure I've got all, as much of the science and the credibility as possible in a, in a bank. So all the resources I'm building through this podcast and through Mojo School, trying to get the practical application and the fun stuff. So I'm going to ask you at some point if we can come and film. Yeah. Or if you've got anything filmed, a little drum lesson, and then I can put that on one of my school um, sure. modules and then link them straight to you. So yeah. Some people can, so that's just a nice visual way. But it's always good to have the science to back that up, isn't it? Because there's still so many people, and it breaks my heart whenever I do a, a Mojo workshop, um, people that will kind of start to, to look at the concepts of creative expression and then hold themselves back because of whatever programming they've had as children. Mm. This is, you know, silly, it's stupid, it's childish. Yeah. Or girls don't do that. Or boys don't do oh, that. Oh, don't get me started or on that. that. You know, that kind of stuff. And I think, oh, and, they, and they're so, you can see the body kind of shut down. Of, oh my gosh, maybe I can do this. It's like, oh no, I'm not allowed. So it's trying to get people to understand where that programming's come from, that societal stuff, and, mm. and, and how that it doesn't necessarily, you can reframe that, it doesn't mean it's yeah. just truth, it might feel like a truth at the time, but you can start to navigate that and start to think a bit differently, and you can start to try things that you might like, and you can start to test concepts, and it just makes it so much easier when you have that scientific backing, that credibility. Yeah, definitely. I mean, from the autism point of view, the, the results of them drumming um, gave them real differences in real life like using knives and forks really? for the first time That's amazing. um communicating better with the family because it, with every musical instrument you've got um coordination communication listening skills um improved confidence um oh there's tons and tons of benefits to learning any musical instrument but yeah. learning the drums specifically is um is about the neuroplasticity and and what it does to, to the your brain. brain, it actually yeah. Yeah, remodels the brain. Yeah. So in terms of autism, what do you think is specifically from your knowledge and from what you do and from your own um, experience as a parent, what do you think it is specifically about, I mean, say, I suppose music in general, but the drums that's specific to supporting people with autism? Because we can signpost people straight away, can't we, to, yeah. to something that might really help them in real time? Well, I, I teach a lot of autistic youngsters, actually. Um, I teach quite a, a variety of neuro Neurodiversity. 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 Yeah. My my favorite is neuro spicy. Oh, I like that. Neuro spicy. Neuro spicy. Yes, I, I love I that. Feel, you know, I think most of us have kind. Of, I, I got into trouble actually. I had a conversation around spectrums the other day. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to ask you about this actually, and then I will go back to the question <laughs> just asked. Okay. It's really okay. interesting. Um, this this conversation around spectrums, right? So this is where I get myself into loads of trouble, but it's fine because it starts conversations. And I had mentioned the fact that we're all on a spectrum. Now, I didn't mean the autistic, autistic spectrum because that's a very clearly defined yeah. spectrum. I meant spectrums in general. And within that, for me, you've got sexuality, you've got your gender, the way you represent your gender, mm -hmm. you have your learning style, you have your yeah. energy levels, you yeah. have your perceived creative ability. So for me, it's like, you know, you look at a mixing desk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I see in my brain. We've got... Well, yeah. All these levels, all these spectrums, and the word spectrum isn't just synonymous with autism. No. It's the word yes. from one polar opposite to the other. Yeah. And I feel like we need to get back into understanding that we have such an amazing, unique recipe of what makes us us. Yeah. That sometimes the labels do get in the way a little bit. Sometimes the labels are absolutely necessary and we need to be able to have them to get support and we need to be able to define things. But sometimes people sort of fail to realize that they're so unique and they've got this recipe and their levels are yes. different they might have a certain learning style they might have a certain experience in life a certain lens a certain filter yeah and not everyone's the same so well no but using the word spectrum got me into massive trouble i've got a, i've got a, uh, lots of friends with autistic children as you yeah, might imagine have, yeah. 
and um, I was talking to one of one of them the other day and we were saying how when you learn more about autism because you don't know about it until until you need to yeah, know until you have to, yeah. um, so when you learn about it you start going oh oh I see that in me Penny I see blocks. that in yeah. him I see that in me I see that in him mm -hmm. and then you think actually I see that in that yes. um, boy's parents I see that in that boy's parents I imagine and then you start thinking okay so are we all autistic um, but the answer is no, no because that just undermines the challenge that autistic yeah, people autism. face Absolutely. yeah, yeah. Um, so we we might have that some of us don't like to be that social yep but yep. that might be any number of reasons yeah. Yeah. with autism it's a specific yeah. social um reason yeah. yeah yeah you know so i think the label is helpful in terms of our current um how schools are funded yeah it's absolutely. the current situation if you've got the label you can get the help and, medi and medi medically medically and you need to know and school yeah. for sure is probably the biggest I, yeah I, I i would say but i wonder how we navigate that how we know because it's exactly the same thing i've obviously worked a lot with with lots of different families lots of different demographics and i'm not a specialist in any area but i i, I come across lots of different things and yeah and um, lots of different experiences and the amount of people who have, um, so one example would be, there's lots and lots of people who talk about um, having ADHD. Yeah. Who have a clinical diagnosis of ADHD. And lots of people who believe they have ADHD because they've got no spicy minds. That's my terminology. Yeah. And that yeah. feels so comfortable. It's like, that's definitely me because that's how I behave. Yeah. And I think that, and, and, and everybody says to me, you must have ADHD, right? I'm like, well, maybe, yeah. maybe not. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So how, how, I just wonder how we navigate our new territory where we're walking into this space now where nobody really knows and nobody really, you know, do we need to, to fit in to a certain group of labels? Do I we mean, need to embrace all labels? It just it's hard, proves it? that nobody is in a box. That's where I'm getting to, really. Yeah. It's the neuro... It's the... We're always trying to put ourselves in boxes. Yeah. But, but actually, there is no norm. No. But there is... Um, like, every autistic person is different, just like every neurotypical person is different. Yeah. You can't box but, that either, can you? No, yeah. because what one person likes, the other might not. Mm -hmm. Everyone's an individual. However, there are uh, certain attributes yeah. that are similar enough to group together to be called autistic and to get the support and, and to, to get yeah, the support, to get the support which is the, which you need is what's, which is the, which is what's necessary yeah because otherwise the labels they get are naughty i know and that breaks my heart oh my god Bad. Yeah. don't get me started and i think that's why i struggle with this concept and i'm always talking about it to different people around labels because i'm so i'm so passionate about trying to ditch the label and trying to challenge labels but i'm also really fiercely protective around specific labels that are necessary it's and because I, it's we hard. need them for we the need help. Them. We absolutely need them for that. But then again, that raises questions for me that we shouldn't need the help. So, yeah. so for me, I think if we had a different sort of cultural um, viewpoint and different spaces and environments were right, there wouldn't be the need for labels. That's because right. if the environment was right, it would just be, here's a human, here's another human, here's another human. Yeah. That human needs that, that human needs that. And everybody would behave in the way they needed to yeah. and get, them, get their needs met. And there wouldn't be the need. Maybe there would still be a need for labels, but I don't think it'd be quite so. But look at schools, mainstream school. You know, my my son is struggling coping at mainstream school. I, it's it's um, just heartbreaking, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Absolutely heartbreaking. But it's because they've applied a one size fits all, mm. and maybe the majority of them do. I don't and know. it's it's the little ones at the edges yeah. that are, are getting sort yeah. of yeah. That, you know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm doing, the more work I'm doing in schools, the more I'm finding that there is very specific need and there is pathways for that, mm -hmm. which are not great. And parents will say they're not great, but it's no. there. But then I, I'm, the more I do this work and the more I uncover things and the more I speak to, to more young people, to more teenagers, to more adults, to more people in my own generation, the more I question the whole thing. And I think so many people actually don't fit into the box that apparently is the normal box. Yeah. Many people manage to just do as they're told, but they're not mm -hmm. comfortable in their own bodies and they end up yeah. with massive self-esteem issues and all this kind That's of stuff. That's it. And I think, is anybody actually, is it, does anybody fit into this normal stuff? Yeah. It just makes me wonder, and especially when I'm teaching, if I'm doing first aid for mental health and I'm teaching the topic of personality disorders, I really struggle with that topic because it's really important because there are clinically diagnosable personality disorders where yeah. people are a danger to yeah. themselves, potentially a danger to other people. 
But when we're talking about these concepts, we're talking about somebody's definition of normal. And there's quite, you know, if anybody Huge. behaves in a way that is not, you know, that is eccentric, oh, hello, uh, <laughs> female drummer over here. Well, that's not what we do, is it? That's not... I know. So I'm I know. Like, who defines this? And it well, gets yeah. back to the question of, well, who def I understand the concept of having to have parameters to live within to keep ourselves safe as a tribe. Yeah. However, who's defining these parameters? Because the parameters that have been defined seem to be harmful for, I would say, the majority of people. Mm -hmm. That's my challenge. I'm thinking, hmm. And the yeah. labels we're now trying to find I to navigate you. that, you know, we're trying to find something that makes us feel better. So we're reaching for a label to say, oh, that's okay. I am, I'm okay. I am normal. Like, we shouldn't be needing half the labels. We should just need... Support. Support. We, yeah. we should all need our needs met and the yeah. environment should be right. And then we wouldn't be reaching out for this stuff. There would still probably be certain things that wouldn't be needed, but it was, wouldn't be such a such a big thing it, it, it shouldn't have to be the battle that it is it shouldn't. you know and we're lucky because our son's school are very very helpful and accommodating um as best they can be but it's still it's not his he's a round peg in a square hole it's not good for him still. is it all year it's just it shouldn't no. have to be that struggle for it, shouldn't. it shouldn't have to be no and it shouldn't have to be that you're not quite normal, you don't quite fit, but we'll try and make things, we'll try and make things easier for you to fit in this alien space. That yes. shouldn't be, it no, shouldn't be it to shouldn't. begin with, it should just be comfortable for everybody. So yeah. then that's got the ongoing battle and that's a lot of the episodes I've had so far have been around that, around yeah. education. So yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a long fight, but I think things are moving because parents are voting with their feet and there's, mo and there's so much demand. It can't go on forever, six year waiting. It's, it's I know. Not fit for purpose, it'll have to break at some point. There's, there's one kiddie that comes to me and he's, just started primary and his parents have been told that the diagnosis process will take till the end of primary i mean he needs the support now yeah. tommy's just got his adhd diagnosis at college and a lot of the youth tribe a lot of people were like yeah i got to college i went through the whole of high school all four years yeah irreparable no damage support. that's going to last a lifetime yeah. for my self-esteem my confidence my labels of myself yeah yeah and now somebody's finally said what it is and, but I still and it believe, makes sense. But I still half believe, because of brain programming, that I'm the problem. Mm. Conceptually, I can see now that actually the environment wasn't right, but in my body, I still feel like I'm a problem. And yes. that's the damage that's being done, yes. isn't it? That's what we've got to try and repair. But imagine if everybody could just be in the woods with a load of drums. You know, that's like, what we're trying to do. We're trying <laughs> oh. to work together and collaborate and bring all these spaces together, because that's the kind of learning environment we need. Yeah. Scientifically proven. Yeah. <laughs> this is the yeah. spaces that we should be teaching and learning and growing together. Um, and like obviously the way you teach and the way I teach, it's a collaboration, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely. Like, I'm not the teacher standing at the front saying, "Do what, just repeat what I say," because I'm I, I'm going to tell you oh, what's no. right and wrong. It's like let's learn together. You have to change your ta uh, teaching tactic with every individual child. What one finds easy, another might not. You have to go down several different approaches to uh, to get the. And you can't do that in a, in a classroom, in a mainstream classroom teaching mainstream subjects. There's no way you could do no, that. No, I don't know so, how they do it. I don't I know. Don't, I don't. Hats off. I really you know. don't. Um, but f for me, each student is an individual. They learn different ways. Some are stronger at reading. Some are stronger at playing. Some are more um, exuberant. Great terminology. Yes, they come in and they like to attack those drums like they hate them. Do you find them? some are like, don't, don't, the other yes, around? yeah. You have to get them to... Yeah, there's quite a lot of people who come in and they don't want to make that much noise. And someone um, just put the sticks through them. Oh, <laughs> some of them take a run and jump. <laughs> I love it. That would be me. <laughs> get me at them. Oh, uh, oh that right. It's just not happening, yeah, is it? Out. That's it. Yeah, Hold my done. Hold my earrings. <laughs>so just rewinding back to the question that i completely distracted you from with <laughs> my potentially neuro spicy brain who knows um just just to make sure we're getting as much information out there as we can from your perspective as a drummer and a drum tutor and a mother yeah when it comes to your expertise in working with autism and working with adhd and different kinds of um, experiences especially that our young people are, are having at the moment yeah so know that's a real passion of yours um drumming in particular what do you think is the big the big difference and the thing that maybe we can encourage people to try it if they're okay. experiencing things okay first of all i think the um the whole action of drumming is quite rewarding because you are you know get into hit things that always a win. That don't say ow yeah always a win. <laughs> i mean technically they do don't they, they do but... yeah they shout back at you yeah. but it's that instant feedback as well isn't it yeah yeah there's there's 
definitely strength around the, um, the the pathways that are being built in the brain and then the equivalent of what that means in real life mm. to the rest of you, to the rest of your life. But then playing the drums is not, um, it's, it's a singular instrument. People don't go and see people play the drums. Only drummers go to see other people just play the drums. The drums is an instrument that needs to be played as part of something. That's a great point. So you have to then develop after you've developed your skills on the instrument, you have to then develop a listening skills mm. and then teamwork, coordination between your limbs to do what you need them to do to make the right noises so that those guys can do what they need to do. Because you're keeping everything together, aren't you? Absolutely. Um, yeah, there's just, there's, there's so much to it. It's so multifaceted. I don't think I, if we were here all time, day. There? There's not enough time. Yeah. I'd love to be able to make people think, especially the transferable skills. For me, that's really something that I want everybody to think about. And I really want to get definitely get something on one of the modules in Mojo School. Is that that just, even if you don't want to be a drummer, you don't have to be an expert drummer. You don't have to play in no, public. You don't have no. to, but to be able to help yourself with your health. You're concentrating on something new. Mm. You enjoy it because it's a challenge and you're getting somewhere with it. Yeah. Um, it's it's not difficult to pick up drumming. It's difficult to maintain and become a good drummer. Yeah. It's not difficult to pick up the skill. Got you. So you could you could learn to read music. You could learn to play a few songs at home. You wouldn't need to mm -hmm. go out and about into the world gigging, but that will take you to a certain level of drumming. Yeah. And then you know on your drumming journey, there's many 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 so levels many that you could raise to. You know. Um, and there's, you know, I don't think I'm even halfway up the drumming you capacity are, you journey. You are incredible, though. But I love no. watching you play. <laughs> I just, I just play and and hope no one sees so me. You, you've said that before, but I'm like, I watch you play sometimes, and the photographer seems to catch you. You're like channeling when you you're in the zone. You are like channeling the music. Like, she wouldn't even know if I was waving at her because you're just like totally in the zone. I yeah. love that. I love that. It's such a. I like the fact I sit at the back, to be honest. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that to me before. It's nice. Me it. It's nice. I just, so we need to I get, get you to like, make the most we, noise. Yeah, at the back. without the face. I think we need to get you right the front, like drum solo <laughs> spotlight. You'd hate that. You? Oh yeah. my god. No, I love it. Drummers are cool though. Drummers they are cool. Go. They are the coolest. I mean, I agree. when you go and see bands live, like um, when I, I remember seeing Slipknot for the first time, <gasps> Joey, Joey Jordison, <laughs> oh my God, he just commanded. His yeah. presence was just insane. Yeah. And there is nothing that compares to that. Yeah. And yeah. the feeling that when you go into a live gig and mm. the bass drum hits you in the yeah. stomach, yeah. that is how the bass drum should always that sound. vibrational medicine. It's part of what yes. I'm doing at the moment. I'm doing a whole course on sound medicine and I bring in drum in and things like that and, and, and music in general because vibration moves energy through. Yes, it absolutely. Moves, like, yeah. It moves emotion through, energy in motion. You can yeah. listen to a song and it can evoke certain emotions. It's such therapy. It's such healing. But people make the assumption, don't they, that... I don't like that genre, so I'm not going to listen to it. Just try yes. it. Or I don't or, want to learn to play an instrument because I'm not musical. Or I, d I don't don't want to be in a band. I don't want to go gigging. Yeah. I haven't got the time. <sighs> you make the time, don't yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, to me, you could use um, drumming exactly the same way you use yoga, Pilates. Yeah, 100%. It's a, it's a workout for your brain. Mm. That's going to help in later life with Alzheimer's dementia. Yeah. It might help with um, brain fog. Um, it certainly helps with coordination. Mm. Um, and listening, team skills, team building skills and look at the for the youth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the team building. Yeah, for communication, definite. team building. Communication, sure, you have yeah. To, don't you? Yeah. You've got no choice. No. I think it's brilliant. I think it's so cool. Everyone should be having, <laughs> and this is why it upsets me that we've had so many debates over the years around music departments being cut. Like, oh, they need yeah. to be like at the forefront of education, don't they? Yeah. They I mean, first. it's almost a standing jo joke in the drummers community about how bad the drums are in schools, yeah, most imagine. schools. I mean, you're looking at, <laughs> you go in and it's just you're really, just like, no. really bad. It's because it's not a priority and this is what I'm trying to switch around with the work yeah. that I'm doing and, and, and all these collaborations is switching around the thought process around how we learn, how we behave as families, as individuals, as communities and just flipping it on its head and understanding that actually these things have to come first. If we can get yes. the foundations and the roots right, then all the academic stuff comes later, naturally. Oh and my God, yeah. It's so good for... It has to be the other way around, doesn't it's it? It's so good for the brain that it's going to have that impact on the learning Everything in, comes in after, every other subject. It's not just a, a, 
a second thought and something to do if you can make the time or no. if you are creative and you fancy it and then there's a little bit of a stigma attached with you know, those creatives that's so wrong it should be the other way around everybody yeah. should be exposed to this stuff and but it, as well it can like it has for me give you an identity yeah. give you something that you hang your hat passion, on purpose. passion yeah exactly um and and you hang your hat on and and that is you then yeah yeah um yeah, definitely. And and that is a confidence building it thing. Is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's some, somewhat, um, something that you can discuss with other people. Mm. You'd start looking at the music. I mean, as soon as you start playing the drums, music is over for you. All you'll ever hear is a drum drums. beat. Drums? Yeah. Gracie said the same, you know. Yeah. Like, well, I'm just trying to deconstruct all these drums now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's That's all you crazy. can ever hear and it's all you'll watch when you go and see. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I'm very sad and I'm like, oh, is that? Is that DWP? Yeah, I was going to say DWP. Yeah, you know? I recognise the look. <laughs> I'm like, Brilliant. he's playing this sort of symbol and that sort of symbol. Yeah. And you look like the setup as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause Definitely. Because I start to notice differences now and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Well, I mean, put it this way when we go to the gigs that we go to, all those drummers have got drum techs and they've got hundreds of drums because somebody else goes in, sets them up and tunes them for them. Well, wouldn't that be nice? When you're on your own, <laughs> it's one up, one down. Yeah. Yeah, like throwing <laughs> up. This is what I can manage with the bare minimum. Yeah. My yeah. God. yeah, but you, you, know, you can make some... It, it, shouldn't, well, it does make a difference, obviously, if you've got 5,000 things set up and you've got a team of techies, but no, yeah. I, you, you play amazing music and it's, you know, what... Is there a massive difference? If you know how to play the drums and you can have, like... A small kit is oh. there a huge difference or I is mean, it more i want to have loads of drums because i can who wouldn't who wouldn't who if wouldn't like if there's yeah. drums everywhere you can't go wrong because everywhere true. you no matter everywhere you, you hit yeah, there'll be something That's no true. i i i just um i think do you know what i mean though you see somebody who's got a really small kit and the song sounds great and then the drums sound great and then you see someone who's just surrounded and you're like I think it's just, again, it's a very personal yeah. art based type thing. Mm. You can listen to, um, I really like Mark, Mike Portnoy, who's the drummer, uh, ex drummer of Dream Theatre, and he did a tour with oh, Avenged Sevenfold when cool. the Rev died. I think he's brilliant. He's got a real voice on the kit. Nice. Um, he plays far more things on his kit than I ever would. Wow. But musicality wise, he's, he's on it. Um, but that's his style. And can you tell, because I can a little bit, because I obviously I'm a music fan, I love music. Can you tell the difference between a lot of the sort of musical heroes, diff completely different styles? If you heard someone, yeah. you think, oh, I know who that is. Uh, I know who that is playing. Quite, quite a lot of the I time, yeah. Imagine. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. that's They, they definitely do. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And it's disappointing if they change lineup and you go and see them and you're like, oh, yeah, I no, wanted them. That's yeah. That's not what I wanted. Yeah, and yet people who don't, who aren't into the drums would not notice who the drum well, was, yes. which no. is interesting, isn't no, it? No, yeah, like yeah. Do. Right, so I've got some questions for you. Oh, right? okay, just, okay. So I'm going to ask you a question that you're not expecting, actually. Oh. Best drummer. Who's your inspiration? Oh. I mean, the Rev. The Rev? The Rev, but obviously he's dead now. But I did get to see him when he was alive. Wow. I got to see them in, in fact, the September before he died. Really? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, and he was my like all time Hero. favorite, uh, followed by Mike Portnoy. Wow. Um, but I think I'm quite new school. I think a lot of drummers would say the likes of Buddy Rich, who was like a jazz drummer, um, even like Ginger Baker, John Bonham. Yeah, yeah all, John Bonham. I hear there's quite a, there's lot. a lot of like purist people, so but I, I'm a bit more like. I like that. Double pedal me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I love that. I love it. Yeah. Right. So, next question, and this is the, these are the questions that I'm asking every single guest. Okay. So we're trying to build a toolkit of cool stuff that can help people. Okay. So, big question is what can we do to change the world? Massive question. But from your perspective, how do we make things better? Um, I mean, me personally, on my mission. Do you mean? Yeah. I yeah. Think, yeah. If you're going to change the world, find one thing that you could do to change the world. How how would that happen? What would it be? Be more inclusive. Mm, brilliant. Be yeah. more inclusive um, and, you know, challenge ableism. Yes. Brilliant. I've got students who play the drums who are in wheelchairs. Yeah. I've got them who play the drums who've got cerebral palsy, uh, ADHD, autism. We've got learning difficulties. We've just done a show where the um there was a number of disabled students that performed and one of them uh, was from our Wrexham studio Michael's student and she absolutely loved playing but it was her stage it was her voice it was her chance wow. the room was packed to the rafters there couldn't have been more people in there we were shocked at how many people came wow. which was amazing because it shows support for does, all our students yeah and they she she just enjoyed it so much and afterwards her parents said 
um, thank you. It, it's made her feel like a rock how star. Incredible. That'd be a core memory for her. She'll never forget that. Absolutely. And that, will, that will influence how the rest of her life moves forward. And watch watch this space because we have professional photos being taken. And I know that there's wow. one of one of my five-year-old drummer students. And he is so excited. He's like this. Mm. What an amazing and you just want to eat do. him. I'm not, surprised, so I'm not surprised you're so passionate about it. What an incredible thing to do and what an incredible gift for you to be able to pass on to people. It's, it's, it's amazing. And like in terms of inclusivity, watching your watching the Rockworks, especially when you tried first, it's just, it's the most incredible thing I've seen. I've I can't wait for Tribe Fest. It's going to be great this year, isn't it? It's going to be so cool. But I can't, I've never seen anything like it. It's just so inclusive and not tick box inclusive. Actually, genuinely inclusive. I mean, as it should be, we do work hard at that. Well, that's, I know, that's, <laughs> we work really hard. It's important to say that actually because it isn't the world isn't set up for that. So you have to make specific yeah. extra hard work effort to make that happen. Well, we learn be. all yeah. the time. Every you know, we ne we never uh, are complacent with it because every time we do a show, we learn something yeah. else and we think, okay, well that could have gone better, but we'll do this next well, time. You'll act on it, and I see yes. so many people that will then just exclude. It's too hard work. So thanks for the oh, feedback. No. You're not welcome next time. I've seen it all oh, over God, the place, no. especially in fashion industry. It was awful, cutthroat. But I, that's what I love about you guys. You and, and we try and do the same as well. We're like, right, we didn't realise that. Brilliant, great feedback. Yes. Well, let's, let's, that's let's. how you evolve. And that's Absolutely. how you grow. Absolutely. Yeah. Feedback's brilliant. And look, and like looking at the impact that it's had. Um, compared to the first shows that we did, you know, it's absolutely insane. The first show we did, I had numerous students learn in Seven Nation Army and we only, we hadn't got them round to uh, playing together. We had to play Seven Nation Army seven times <laughs> in a <the> row. <laughs> and afterwards we said, let's never do let's that again. That. Let's <laughs> never do that again. Seven by seven. Oh my gosh. That's it. Yeah, but then that is, you can't learn any other way, can you really? <laughs> You've got to kind of go through it to kind of move forward. So I love that. Yeah, yeah. and across the board, everybody can be, you can do better, can't they? Yeah, everybody oh, can everyone can do always better. do better at being inclusive. Yeah. Okay, so next question is, on the smaller scale, what one thing can people do themselves every day or is one little thing that you can bring into your life to help you feel better? I think I probably know where you're going to go with this, but you might... I mean, it. it's a hard one because it makes me sound really pious, but don't judge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just have... An open mind, if you see someone difficult, with difficulty or having a, a stressful time, it's not your place to go, oh, they're misbehaving, they shouldn't be doing that. What's that mother doing there? Oh, this, that and the other. Yeah. Just have, be kind in your heart. Yeah, all the perfect parents out there that like to, yeah. And I suppose it's human nature to judge, which is an odd concept because it's so damaging. But it we, is, but yeah. Just kindness, like I say, compassion just and kindness. Exactly and just that. a bit of a pause to think, what is that? What's going on for that person? Exactly that. Because you don't know, do you? people have different journeys, different mm. experiences all the time. There's so much neurodiversity out there, and mm. people struggle with things that other people don't struggle with at all. And actually, over your own life span, yeah. you can find something challenging that wouldn't have faced you years before. There we go. Spectrums. See, Spectrums, got, yeah. like, it's all about that yeah. recording desk. This it's is at max. Yeah. At now moment, it's not. I'm here on that and there on that exactly. and it all moves. Which means that each individual cannot fit into a box. Because no. Because our levels are all completely different. So. Yeah, and they will be at different points of our life as well. Yeah, depending on what's going on with our experiences, with our families, with our hormones, with our mm -hmm. health. With our, it's just, yeah. yeah. And we oh, need absolutely. to embrace that, don't we? Embrace the fact that... And that, that's so my journey, I suppose, reflects that and what I'm trying to teach, but not only teach, but do it myself because yeah. it's one thing being able to preach something, but actually doing it is very different. Yeah, yeah. Is having, is understanding that not everybody is having the same experience. And I struggled that yeah. years ago, I just assumed that everybody's brains work like mine, which apparently not they many do. <laughs> And you, but then you then it's confusing when you come across somebody who doesn't agree with you or doesn't have the same experience as you or doesn't behave the same way as you and you automatically have that tribal response of you're wrong there's something wrong with you 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 don't I, I don't yeah feel, but it's, it's then about you understanding avoid them or yeah. you're afraid of them yeah. or yeah it's and that is where things become less inclusive yep yeah, that's the problem but mm. understanding that actually you're just having a different experience to me and all those things are cool yeah and, and yeah. at the same time not trying to then fit in and change yourself to go all out maybe i should do that Und yeah. standing in your own light but understanding that everyone else should do the same and it's yes. not your business yeah to be trying to influence other people or yeah. judging other people i think yeah. that's brilliant it's very true and that's something you can do it doesn't cost any money does it to no to be a i mean person. maybe not less judgy maybe more be kind more kind yeah. rather than just that be kind. be kind and and just yeah. take a step back you know and 
and try and understand and if you can't understand then don't say anything just yeah, move on just, just, just do something else. leave do something else yeah <laughs> no completely yeah it's not your place i love that yeah just be kind so every single day just do something that's kind and yeah the dopamine hits and the and all of the brain chemistry from being nice it's so it's reciprocal people tend to yes. be nicer to you you yeah. feel better it's like a buy one get one free on the brain chemistry <laughs> you feel better and so does everybody else so. i love that brilliant i love it last question for my spotify playlist oh yeah this is a difficult one that people struggle with. oh my god There's yeah so many songs out there but you can have more than one if you want but is there a particular song that when you are having a bad one and you just want to feel better, what what is a song that just makes you feel better? Right. Is there one? Or is you there ask, one? You've pre-asked me this question. Have you been thinking about and, it? Oh my time? God, it's all it's I've been hard, thinking about. Yeah. As a musician, to ask me to I know, I drill really down to one, one song, song, I was like, mm. not possible. Yeah. So I was considering it from many different angles. So mm-hmm. one song that always brings me pleasure is our first dance song, which oh, was Warmness on the Soul by Avenged Sevenfold. What a tune! It's, oh, nice. it's lovely, yeah. but it's perhaps not the feel-good one that you're no, after for your Spotify. Good for you, but that's a lovely feel good song. for me. Yeah, yeah. But um, one we play in Blood Moon is um, Chelsea Dagger, and everybody loves Chelsea Dagger. Yes. They get up, they can't stop. Oh, that's, that's a great, great feel-good tune. That's a brilliant choice. Everyone knows it. Yeah. yeah, and they 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 all know the words. They want to have a dance. Na, 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 na. It doesn't matter. Dance, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a popular one. Um, but then there's a really hauntingly beautiful song that I always love listening to by Slash and Miles Kennedy called Starlight. I love Starlight. I've got it's my album in the car song. at the moment is Slash and Miles. Is it's it? In the car at the moment, yeah. It's That's a lovely. beautiful song. I'm going to put that on as well then. Okay. I'm going to put Starlight and Chelsea Dagger for sure. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, and yeah. they're so different, but such different emotions that they yeah. all... It's, it, music's powerful. Well, that's it. And if you were to ask me one for the kids, yeah, if the kids were all... Um, if it was about feel good for the kids, it's Uptown Funk. Yeah. Oh, They yes. love it. Oh, I've never known I anything like it. Three, triple, you are a musician, so you're allowed to have an extra. All I right, okay. Put, um, yeah. Okay, yeah. You'll have to maybe pick them out of a hat. But there you go. No, so like I've, I've been thinking about feel good songs yeah. in my world. Yeah, I love them. I love um, them. Yeah. Because it is, it's medicine. Music is absolute medicine and everybody in some way needs to maybe just introduce a bit more music, however they do it, into their yeah. lives. But Well, it invokes memories. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got a song I remember my dad by. I've got a song that we did our first dance to. I've got songs that made, made me feel independent at mm. certain times and songs that... I struggled to learn, so I was really proud of myself when I did. Those feelings, and you're not, and this is, you know, the whole basis of my work. I just love the fact that we can experience things in our body, good or bad, yeah. even when they're not happening to us right now. That's so yeah. powerful. And yes. It's how we heal. It's how we, it's how we remove trauma. It's understanding that we actually can feel a very physical sensation connected to a memory. Yeah. And if we can bring back more of that through music, the positive things, and have that as a resource to be able to help us to process and to feel good or to feel proud or to feel strong, that's brilliant because we know for sure that most people are struggling with their daily lives mm-hmm. with feelings in their body from past memories that aren't helping them, that aren't yeah. good. Yeah. So if we can use music to process and to get the good stuff in, it's a win. Yeah. And again, it's free. Yeah. Imagine if you could put it in a pill and sell it. <laughs> let's go back to that analogy. <laughs> We'd be billionaires. Maybe by this time next year, we might get some funding in. Yeah. That would be great. Behave. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe not. No. <laughs> so just before we head off then, just um, talk about, not even talk about, we're going to do a final little sentence now around okay. the name of your CIC, because I'm going to add a link, and the name okay. of your band, because I'm going to add Ooh. a link as well. So do some shameless plugs. Okay, so I work for the Rockworks Academy. Um, and we are based in Flincher and Wrexham. We've got two branches, one in Penneford and one in Wrexham Town Centre. Um, and I am in a band called Blood Moon. Um, and we are a rock rock covers band. Um, and we do the, the, the local circuit around North Wales. And they're going to be at Tribe Fest this year. So I'm going to put that in as a link as well. Oh, thank you so much, Tam. Thank you. you thank you for superstar. having me in this amazing thing. Thanks. It's like music session. Music is in session. Yes, Brilliant. absolutely. Thanks.